Hey, this is Scott L. Miller. Today on Sam IT, I'm going to tackle the question of what's the difference between Microsoft Access and SQL Server. This comes up a lot, especially in the SMB, because a lot of uh, small businesses like to use Access because it's, well, it's very accessible. It's relatively low cost. It's easy to get up and running. It comes as part of the extended Microsoft Office suite. Almost everybody has it, or at least it's very common. It's easy to acquire. It's well understood, and so forth. It is targeted pretty heavily at small businesses. Uh, everyone knows it. Owners know it. Managers know it. Non-technical people can often delve into it pretty simply because it looks and feels and acts pretty much like other members of the Microsoft Office suite. So if you're an Excel expert, you use Word all the time, Access is pretty easy to start using. Now, what exactly is Access? Access is an application builder. It is a tool that looks and acts a lot like a Microsoft Office tool that we use to build relatively simple applications that are driven by data. It is common to believe that Access is a database, and even Microsoft sometimes will use the term Access Database, but there is no such thing as an Access Database itself. There are databases built by Access that we might refer to that way casually, but Access itself is not a database engine and has no database format. That is where people tend to start getting confused. Access itself is simply a very specific application building platform, one that requires, if you want to use an, act, uh, an application built with Access, that you must also have Access licensed and installed on your machine. So Access is not as flexible as, say, writing your own application in your own uh, programming language, like PHP or ASP.NET or something of that nature, because it requires that you have Access installed. So it's extremely limited in its utility, but it is pretty easy to get up and running quickly. Everything that people actually associate with Access, which is the databases, is not actually part of Access. Access may configure those things for you. It may be what installs them as part of something else, but it is not the database. There are two main databases that are used for access. The first, the one that people commonly misidentify as being access itself, is the JetDB database. That's its name, JetDB. I'm not using database redundantly. JetDB is an embedded database. For those who know it, it's similar to ones like SQLite or SQLite. What that means is it's not a relational database management system. There's no JetDB server. This is what makes it easy for people to get confused because there's no JetDB running on their system. There's nothing to look at. JetDB is a format and the files and the driver for communicating with them. This is what makes JetDB very cumbersome to use once you have more than a single user because each of the users who want to access it must have the correct driver and connect to the shared file and then the file has to just hope that the drivers honor its information so that they don't step on each other. There's no, there's no official arbitration and things like that. This is relatively common uh, to use embedded databases for small applications because they're very, very easy to use and don't require anyone to install or manage a server because the application can build in the drivers or get them directly from the operating system uh, and then talk directly to the files on disk. So JetDB is very popular for really small things. It's very, very simple for you to deal with. You never have to worry, is my database running or something of that nature? Have I misconfigured it? There's nothing to configure. It's just a file format. So, and JetDB works really well, right? People give it a lot of grief because it doesn't scale up and it, you can't use it with multiple users. Well, mostly that's because you're using it inappropriately access. If JetDB is used appropriately, it can scale very large. It can handle a large number of users. The thing that it can't handle well is being shared, which no database can. This is not the fault of JetDB. No embedded database will work well when you have multiple people connecting to it directly. There should be an application arbitrating between end users and the application. Access does not do this. It puts its multi-user interface between the access layer, the application made by access layer, and the file itself, which means that every person using JetDB is using a separate application. They may be copies of the same one, but they are copies running in different places. They do not talk to each other. They only look at this one shared file. That is an access problem. That is not a JetDB problem.
If you were to use JetDB behind, for example, a web application and all of the uh, users accessed it through that web application, say PHP or ASP.NET uh, or JavaScript, like uh, Node.js, something like that, JetDB would be able to handle thousands or millions of users without any problem. It would just not provide some of the features you may want. Now, stepping back, that's one of the database options for access. The other is Microsoft SQL Server. So when you're working with Access, it's not Access or SQL Server. It's Access plus JetDB or Access plus SQL Server. SQL Server is never an alternative to Access. They are not competing products. SQL Server is the more robust, more business-oriented, real core database for Access's front-end applications. SQL Server is an extremely high-end, incredibly powerful and robust relational database management system. Unlike JetDB, which is an embedded database, SQL Server runs as a service. You can see it running on your system. You need to configure it, you need to monitor it, you need to take care of it, you have to feed it, you have to update it, and all those things. But it is massively powerful it is one of the best relational databases on the market today and has been for a very long time. And it provides its own security and arbitration layers and uh, caching and all these things. It does not require the driver in Access to do those things. The driver in Access only provides a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of just enough to be able to talk the protocol of SQL Server so that they're able to uh, converse and pull data out of that. So when using JetDB, all of the logic, all the power of the database has to be kept in a driver that's used by, Jet, uh, by Access. But when working with SQL Server, all of that, or almost all of that, is moved out to SQL Server itself, allowing SQL Server to do the heavy work and Access to be just a very light front end displaying the data from it. So, very important to understand, SQL Server and Access are not competing products, they are different kinds of things, and SQL Server is the expected business class store in which your data goes from Access. The use of JetDB with Access is really intended only for learning or for single user applications. They do allow you to use it for more than that, but it is not effective, it does not work well, and they do provide, they being Microsoft, a free version of Microsoft SQL Server, which can be used up to a pretty good size. So you're not stuck having to get a really expensive SQL Server for a normal small business. Chances are you would fit into the free or at least a very low cost tier of SQL Server, but generally free. It goes pretty big for free. Uh, so it's, 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 it's interesting how these two things get overlapped in people's minds, uh, but they really are not competitors. So if you ever hear someone say, I want to move from Access to SQL Server, you got to be like, whoa, what are you talking about? Because SQL Server does not provide an application front end, and Access doesn't provide a database. They are two complementary, but completely different kinds of products. One can never replace the other. They do not compete. They cooperate. They are part of the same ecosystem. And JetDB that competes with SQL Server in a weird kind of way that they're from the same vendor and Microsoft provides the one just for people who don't want to go through the effort of installing and setting up SQL Server. So if you want to just throw access on your desktop and you're not, you don't want to be overseen by IT or you don't have uh, uh, licensing rights for whatever reason to put on SQL Server or your um, unable to install it for whatever reason, or you don't have privileges to open the ports, you want whatever, you can just use JetDB. It doesn't require all those special rights. So it does have good purposes. There is reasons why Microsoft has chosen to make JetDB included with Access, but it is not how it's intended to be used when you're using shared applications, and Microsoft has gone extremely out of their way to provide all of the tools for very low cost or free for Access, so you can still use Access with SQL Server to power it on the back end, and at which point you can go to really large scale if you want. You can still have an organization with 10,000 users. Everyone has to access it at once. It will work and handle that pretty elegantly. That doesn't mean that using a client server application like Access and SQL Server is really the way to build enterprise applications. That's a separate discussion. But this is really just understanding how Access and SQL Server relate and interoperate with each other. Thanks for joining me. Remember to like and subscribe. If you've got questions, put them below. And as always, you can sponsor us on Patreon.